as the Midianites were impoverishing the people of God. And they were so impoverished during the days of the judges because they had forsaken God, because everybody did what was right in their own eyes. And when they cried unto the Lord, he heard them, and he sent them a deliverer. Gideon was in the cave. He was afraid of the bands of the Midianites during the time of harvest, and he was very frightened, very alone, very little. And he had an encounter with God. He called him mighty man of God. Well, I'm not mighty. I'm the least in my father's house. I'm not important. I don't have any power. Where are the miracles that our fathers talked about? And we can say the same thing. Where are the miracles? Where are the healings? Where is the deliverance? Where is the power of the Holy Spirit that we have seen in the past or heard in the past? And God is God that doesn't change. He is the God of miracles. The things that he did in the past that the blind saw and the lame walk and the deaf heard and the paralyzed moved and the demonic were set free and those that were lunatic they got a right mind and those that were weak became strong those that were crippled could walk and dance and jump and shout and those that were dumb could speak and those that had sicknesses were, be, were made well. There was nothing that he did not do. The maimed were made whole. Those that were defeated be, were undefeated. The hungry were fed. God did great and mighty things in the midst of his people. And in the latter days, he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh, meaning that you are not exempt from the power of the Spirit of God, from the very presence of God, from the very power of God, as he pours out his Spirit upon you. That you may feel like you are the least. The youngest was not regarded. It was the oldest that everyone looked up to. But Gideon, hey, he was the youngest, the least in his family. Disregarded, disrespected. Nobody cared about him. David was the least and the youngest in his household. He was so disregarded that he wasn't even invited to the sacrifice when Samuel said, bring all your sons. They left him in the field with the little flocks. They didn't even regard the youngest. But yet God did. He was the least. He was disrespected. He was not even a part of that family that day. He wasn't called to the feast. He was the last to be considered. And sometimes you may feel in your life that you are the least and that you're disrespected, and that you're overlooked, that no man cares for your soul, that there is no hope for you, that your hope is dried up, that you don't have any position and you cannot expect promotion because you feel like you're down on the bottom and that nobody cares about you, that you're not important at all. Well, I've got good news for you. You are very important to God. That when you make him important in your life, as your father, as your savior, as your God, as your redeemer, as your friend, as your deliverer, as your healer, as the miracle working God, that he will regard you. He takes the little things, the despised things, the overlooked things, the rejected things, the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And you can look at yourself and say, well, if God used me for his glory, that would be really foolish. Then that means that you're a number one candidate for him to use so that he gets the glory. So when he called Gideon, and Gideon put out the fleeces, 
God answered the fleeces, called him a mighty man of God. Oh, I'm not mighty. I'm puny, short, and little, and I'm not even loud. You know, I don't know what to do. I have no power. I have no army. I have no position in my family. Here I am hiding from the Midianites. How can I do anything? I haven't seen the miracles. I haven't seen the signs and wonders. I have heard about that. It's part of our history. But it's so long ago. We can feel that way. And then God called and chose him. The Spirit of God came upon him. And he called all of Israel to respond for warfare against the Midianites. Thousands of them came. And then God said, I can't bring deliverance through these. There's too many of them. They'll take the glory for it, the credit for it. So send all of them that are fearful away. Many of them left. The majority left. And he said, there's still too many of them. Take them down to the water and have them drink water. And I'll separate two groups there. The ones that left, those are the ones that are going to bring deliverance, and I'll use them. See, he used somebody. He used Gideon, the least in his family. He used what nobody else thought possible. Nobody else would have chosen Gideon. Nobody else would have regarded him or said, you are money man of God. You're hiding from the enemy. You're no better than we are in bed, worse. At least we're out there and you're hiding. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Do you see yourself as a mighty person of God? Do you see yourself as a warrior, a soldier? Do you see yourself as one that stands undefeated, that's a powerhouse, a lighthouse? Do you see yourself with hands that are laying hands on the sick for them to recover? Do you see the words that you speak that are life? Do you see yourself that way? Or do you see yourself as defeated, as ignored, overlooked, valueless? Well, God took the 300 and gave a great victory because he wanted the glory. He wanted everybody to know that it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And his spirit was upon Gideon, his called one when others rejected, his chosen one like David. Who's he? Who does he think he is? He's not like us, the older son that are more powerful. They didn't even respect him. And yet God chose him. You don't have to be respected by other people to be respected by God. You don't have to have your words respected when he has respect unto you and your prayers. You need his approval. And no matter how small and insignificant you are, God will use you for his glory because he wants to be glorified in his remnant warriors. He takes the bolt and sets it aside and takes the remnant that is devalued by other people. Oh, who wants that remnant when we sold years ago? <laughs> And we'd go into the store and there would be all these bolts of material and you know how that is. Beautiful material and very expensive, some of it. And we would really like that material. But then we would go over there and on a table aside would be remnants. And we would look at them and go through them and find something that we could do something with because it was cheap, it was disregarded. It was the last place to be before they threw it in the dumpster, the remnant that was at the end of the bolt or a little bit, and you couldn't measure it out. You couldn't say, okay, I want a yard and a half of this, or this is too big of a remnant, or it's too small. 
They would not cut the remnant for you. You took it as it was. And God says that he will take us as we are. That we don't have to fit into someone else's pattern or someone else's design or even what you would want to design for yourself, that he will take you as a remnant, just as you are, no matter how small you are, the size or the width. And he will make something good out of you. He makes everything beautiful in his time. And your times are in his hand. And he is in charge of the times and the seasons. And he will choose who he wants and that he can use. Not someone strutting around or big and important in their own eyes or in the eyes of other people. He rejected that. He rejected those that were haughty. Those that were special in their own eyes or even special to someone else. He took the least. He took the refused. He took the rejected. He took the despised. He took that which was not sought after. He chose that. It wasn't a princess that became the mother of Jesus Christ. It was a low, poor handmaiden that found favor in the sight of the Lord. It was not the palace where Jesus was born, even though that's where kings were born and expected to be. It was in a lowly stable in little Bethlehem where no one would have ever thought that the Christ, the Son of God, would be born. They all expected the Messiah, but no one expected this to be the place of his birth. Or that little, rejected, despised, lowly handmaiden to be the mother of the Son of God. Nor did they expect that David would be the king an everlasting king, by the way. He will come back and rule and reign forevermore. They never expected. Did they really expect little Samuel to be a prophet of God when he wasn't born of the children of the high priest? He was lent unto the Lord all the days of his life. Don't you want to be lent unto the Lord regardless of your age or the younger's Small, tall or short, fat or thin, woman or man, male or female, doesn't matter about your age, young or old, don't you want to be lent to the Lord for the rest of your life? To belong to Him? To be separate, to be holy, to be empowered to do whatever He desires you to be. Greatly beloved of the Lord. Daniel, a captive, a eunuch, taken from his homeland, enslaved, taken to Babylon, and became a ruler there because God chose him. Not because he was smarter than anyone else, but because he refused to defile himself by the king's meat and wine. He refused, even though his mother wasn't there, his father wasn't there. He couldn't go to the temple to pray. He couldn't be in his homeland anymore. He had no idea what was going to be his destiny. But in all of that, in his captivity, in his bondage, in his dilemma, he refused to bow, bend, and kneel to any other God. And if we refuse to bow, bend, and kneel, if we refuse to be defiled by the culture and by even the backslidden church, if we refuse to 
dot our I's and cross our T's to please others. And we make up our mind that we're going to serve God. That he's going to choose and equip and empower and use you for his glory. And I say again, it'll be for his glory. Because you already know that you're not big enough, strong enough, powerful enough, rich enough, wise enough to do anything of any value. And so when we submit and surrender and humble ourselves before him and allow him to get the glory and empower us by his spirit, then he will use you, the rejected, the cast away by others, but you will not be a cast off or cast away from him.